Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Namaste Lotus Hands, and I'm gonna be sipping some Pinot Noir. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, we're gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas, which you can get at any of your local craft stores or you can get online, and of course you can switch up the size, but that's the size I'm gonna be using. Uh, we're gonna be using acrylic paint. The paint colors that I'm gonna be using are titanium white, Cobalt Blue, Mars Black, Chrome Yellow. This is a Burnt Sienna, which you might hear me refer to as Rust. This is Burnt Umber, which I usually call Brown. This is a Fire Red, and this is a Fluorescent Orange. And of course, you can certainly switch up these colors, but those are what I'm gonna be using. For brushes, I'm gonna be using a number 24 flat brush a number 12 round brush and a number zero round brush. And I'm also gonna uh, have a regular pencil. You can just use like a number two pencil that's gonna have your regular lead um, color. And I also am gonna have a white pencil, which you could substitute this for a piece of white chalk. Um, so those are those materials. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I'm also gonna upload a picture of the final painting, which you can find in the description below, that you can print and use as your own personal reference as you go along through this painting process. And that's all you're gonna need for materials today. All right, so for this first step, what we're gonna be doing is we're drawing a silhouette of the shape of your hands. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use my uh, pencil um, and I'm gonna use my hand as my tracing utensil. You certainly could lay this down on a table, that might make it a little bit easier, but what you'll do is you'll find a nice spot. I've got my fingertips going about halfway up my canvas. You can sit, you can sit your hand literally just like this, put your arm at a um, angle, and you're gonna just kinda trace around it and then if you wanna do any modifications, you certainly can. And then you can either just mimic the shape on the other side if you're not ambidextrous, or you can put your other hand down and use your other hand to trace around it. So you wanna have a nice you know, firm line that you'll be able to see. You can certainly modify it a little bit once you, once you have the initial shape on there, and you can certainly use your if you have an eraser, you can certainly erase and modify that shape. And that's all we're gonna do for the first step. All right, so for the next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be painting the background. I'm gonna be painting it with a dark blue. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna preserve some of my cobalt blue for later when I, I want it to be brighter and lighter, but I need to use a lot of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, gonna, I'm using my big um, number 24 flat brush. I'm gonna take some of my blue and scoop it away so I can use that later. I'm gonna use the rest of this blue in addition to a touch of black to make a dark blue. So I just touched, I picked up a little scoop of black and I'm mixing it around in my cobalt blue. I want this to be like almost a nice navy blue. Um, so I wanna make sure I get it dark enough but I also know that this particular um, type of paint is gonna get darker as it dries. So I don't want it to go too, too dark, but I like this nice um, navy kind of blue. So I'm just spinning it around here. And once you get the desired shade, what you're do, gonna do is just paint your background. So you don't need to paint it with any particular br brush stroke. Um, I'm probably just gonna use a nice smooth left to right motion, but you could, um, I suppose you could dot it or s paint it in circles or whatever brush stroke you would like to do, but this to me gives it a nice smooth um, appearance. And we are going to be painting, 
about a thousand dots <laughs> on top of this later. So this particular um, layer does not have to be perfectly executed. Um, so if you do get some light spots or dark spots or little streaks from your brush here and there, don't worry about it because you'll be able to cover them up later. And when you get towards your, um, your silhouette, you just kind of want to go right up to that pencil mark. I'm kind of using the side of my brush to give myself a nice clean line. And you can certainly modify it a little bit if you need to or you know, make that shape a little bit different. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth, left to right, to give it a consistent brush stroke. Um, it doesn't have to be the same the whole way, but definitely you wanna, if you can, have that paint nice and even throughout. Um, but again, if you have little streaks or light spots or dark spots, I wouldn't really sweat over it too much because you're going to be covering it. And again, I'm just kind of getting this entire background area. You want to get right up to your outline. You don't want to forget about this little area underneath here, which is an area that people notoriously forget to do. So I'm going to remind you probably a couple of times to make sure that you remember to do it. Um, and some people do like to do a second coat on this particular step. So once you do have it all painted in, if you find that it's too streaky for you or um, you want to have more of a solid coat, just let it dry for a couple minutes um, and you can come right back and do another, another coat on it. Um, and that'll really give you a nearly perfectly ex executed layer that will be consistent through the whole thing. So I've got that side done, and now I'm just gonna go right over to this side. I do have inside these where my fingertips met. Um, you could, I suppose, pull out a smaller brush to get that little crevice in there, but I'm gonna, I know that when I go to paint um, the fingers themselves, I'll be able to modify any little boo-boos that I might have created um, as I was doing this exterior um, colored part. So again, I'm just kind of getting this entire exterior colored with my dark blue. You might want to go with a dark purple or a dark green. Whatever color is really your preference is is fine by me. I'm just using a nice dark coat so that way when I do put the um, other elements on the painting, they'll really pop nice and, and you'll be able to see them in a nice kind of dramatic way on top of this dark color. And then when you're all set with this step, we are going to switch brushes to, um, and you can see I just got into my hand a little bit. Totally not concerned about that because I'm, I'm just gonna paint over it in a minute. Um, so when you get this all done, what you can do is you can put this large brush away in your water cup and we're going to be using the number 12 round brush so you can just get ready for the next step. Alright, so now that we've got the background done, we're going to be painting the, the main layer on our skin of our hands. We'll do the little fine details later, but right now we're just painting the skin. So I'm going to be using my number 12 round brush. I'm going to be using four colors. I'm going to be using brown, which is the burnt umber. Um, this is burnt sienna or rust, chrome yellow, and white. And my goal here is to have the inside of the hands and the bottom of the hands dark and the outside and the top of the arms light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm starting with brown on my brush and I'm gonna make myself a dark line down the middle of my hands and then I'm gonna make dark paint, the dark brown, at the bottom side of the, of the hands. And you just wanna watch out for wet blue. If you find yourself going through some wet blue, don't worry, you can, you can um, modify it or uh, make a little correction later. I still just have dark brown on my brush right now. I'm at the bottom of the hands and you don't have to make a, you know, a super clean line. You can definitely um, have it a little bit loose. Now I'm 
dipping my brush in that rust color. And now I'm going to start to get them to in intermingle. You'll see my brush is going to go a little bit faster now. Um, that way I can get them to look like they belong together. I want them to kind of blend and overlap with one another. I want to get this dark color all the way down here. Then the next color I'm going to go into, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up yellow and white at the same time. This is going to start to get my colors to blend together here. And I'm going to kind of overlap it into the darker colors. So again, yellow and white. It helps if the um, rust and brown are still a little bit wet. Um, but if they're not, that's okay. You can certainly um, add more paint to your brush to get them to feel wet. So again, yellow and white is going to be this um, blending kind of color to get that skin to start to transition into a more natural color. I'm doing the same th thing through the um, entire hand all the way up to those fingertips. So still, I just have yellow, I picked up yellow and white, but I still have the remnants of the brown and the rust on my brush. So that's going to um, get these colors to really look like they belong together. And I'm just, my brush stroke is kind of just going along the, um, the shape of the arm. And now the next color I'm gonna pick up is just white. So I still, again, my, my brush is dirty. It has the remnants of the other colors on it, but the white is going to act, act as that um, exterior bright color to the skin, the one that's being highlighted by all the light that's happening in your painting. So I'm gonna put that over here on the left-hand side. I'm kind of giving myself a clean, kind of line to meet the blue, but if there's lumps and bumps in it, don't worry, because that's what your hands do. Your knuckles, your, um, your skin, everything has kind of lumps and bumps. And while this paint is still wet, I'm gonna just kind of work it into those darker colors that are below it. And you can see my brush is kind of going back and forth over this wet paint to get it to blend in together. And you can certainly, you know, modify it once it's on here. You can work at it for a few minutes to get that blend to really have a nice color that you like. If you find yourself um, that it's becoming murky or you're over blending or it's just not working, you can always either wash and dry your brush, start from scratch on your brush, or you can dry your canvas. You can use a blow dryer and you can um, dry your canvas and just kind of start with another layer. Um, we're not going for anything that's photorealistic here. We're just really going for something that has the resemblance of a skin tone, um, that's got a little bit of shadow in between, um, and that it's got kind of the shape of the hand. So you might want yours to be lighter, you might want yours to be darker, um, you might want yours to have more of a suntan look. Me, I am from Massachusetts <laughs> and I have very white skin so usually all of my um, skin tones turn out nice and pasty just like I am. Um, but you, I, I do know that people tend to um, emulate what they see or what they, what they um, have visible in their life. So for me, I've got this really pale skin, so I tend to, um, that's the color I know the best, <laughs> so I can really um, get that to, to work its way in nicely to my paintings. So what I'm doing now is, I, again, I'm just kind of working this light color on the outside. It's okay if it's got, you know, not a perfectly straight line. And if you feel like it's too yellow, you can always add some more of that burnt sienna. Like I feel this is a little bit yellow, so I'm gonna put a little bit of white with a touch of that burnt sienna on my brush, and that's gonna bring a little bit more of almost a pinky tone into it. Um, so you can certainly tweak the shade of skin all you want until you get it a nice shade that you're comfortable with. I have a couple of spaces down here that don't actually have paint on them, so I'm gonna make sure that I get that fully covered. And then we are going to be using um, 
either that white pencil that you have or um, chalk for the next step. So once you've got a nice gradient from dark in the center to light on the outside of your hands and you've got them all nice and painted in, you can put this medium or this um, number 12 round brush away in your water cup and you can take out your um, lighter pencil. You, I guess you could even use white paint if you wanted to for the next step and just get ready for it. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are creating a circle above the hands. This is gonna be the start of our design. Um, you can sit here and make yourself a circle with, with your light colored um, utensil. You can go about an inch or so up from your fingertips. You can do it freehand, or you can just go into your kitchen or your supply closet and grab something round and stick it along here, maybe an inch, inch and a half above those fingers and make yourself a nice circle. So whatever way is easier for you is fine by me. Um, and that's, that's all we're gonna do on that step. We're just making a circle. Okay, so for the next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, finish the design shape of um, the focal piece up here. So I'm gonna create, I'm using my pencil, the light pencil, um, or piece of chalk or whatever you choose. Um, I'm gonna make flower, flower leaves or petals um, in the shape of kind of like a teardrop. So I want mine kind of symmetrical, so I'm gonna do one straight at the top. I wanna to leave a little bit of space um, above here. So I'm gonna do something like that, something like that. And I want this to be symmetrical, so I'm gonna do one on either side as well. I also wanna do one below. So I'm gonna go directly below here. And you could, again, take out a ruler and make sure you have this perfect, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, I'm gonna do one over here, hopefully in a similar length as that, but if it's not, again, if it's not perfect, no worries. So something like that. And then I'll do one more in here, in between. And again, you can certainly, since you're using a pencil, you could modify it. That's all I'm gonna do. So when you're done with this, you can put this brush away and we're gonna use the, um, the round number 12 for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step, we're using our number 12 round brush. We are coloring in the petals with black paint only. So I'm taking black paint and I'm just coloring them in. So this is, um, a pretty easy step, um, might take you a couple minutes to do. I do recommend that you paint that circle with black just so you can get rid of your chalk mark or whatever um, utensil you used for creating the outline. And this is a great time to also modify any of your um, petals if you want any of them bigger you can certainly do that. If you did use chalk, chalk is very easily erased with water. Um, so you can certainly, you know, re-identify any of the petals if you want to. Um, but once you get that paint on there, it's not so easy to erase. So you do definitely want to make any, any changes or modifications before um, well, once you, once you paint it, if you have, you know, little white lines on the edges, you can certainly, like, I think I want this one a little bit longer, so I'm going to come out just a little bit further on that one. And I'm trying to get the points of these petals or leaves or whatever you're going to call them. I'm trying to get them on the, on the pointier side, but you might want yours round. You might 
not want to have the same exact design as I do. I want you to really, you know, express your own creativity. I always encourage um, creativity in all of my classes. So if you decide that you want these to be even just triangles, maybe yours don't emulate leaves or petals like this. Um, you can see mine are not 100% symmetrical with one another, um, which I think is kind of the charm of this, that it doesn't have to be perfect. Because um, I don't know if anything in this world really is perfect, um, but the, the um, individuality of how you place these really does kind of make it your own, and it almost gives it a, a kind of a natural earth element if it's not perfect, you know. Um, and we are going to be coloring a whole bunch of dots on top of this, so even if you don't get full coverage with the black paint, which you typically will because the black is going to cover nice, but if you don't get 100% full coverage, know that you'll be able to um, hide it with some colored dots later. Um, and when you get to this part, I'm going to go a little bit slower because I do want to um, keep the integrity of the shape of my fingers that I have going on here. So I am going just a little bit slower. And if you feel you want to use a smaller brush to accomplish this, feel free to do so. Um, I just gave myself a little fingernail, which I think is kind of neat. Um, oops, I guess I gave myself one on this side too. Uh, so. If that happens to you, fine. If your fingertips turn out a little bit shorter than you wanted because you got the black paint on them, that's all right too. Um, nobody needs to know that these were supposed to be your hands while you were doing this. Um, but for the next step, we are gonna do another step here with this same brush. You're gonna wanna wash it and dry it in between though. So wash and dry that number 12 brush. Get ready for the next step. Alrighty, so what we're doing for the next step, we are going to be painting our lotus in the center of here. I'm going to use my number 12 round brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are red, white, yellow, and black. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with red and white on my brush at the same time. The first mark that I'm going to be making is almost like a smile line. This is going to be um, in this vicinity. This is going to be the base for my main lotus petal. And I don't like to over blend it because I like the um, light and dark streaks of that. Um, I have to preserve a center in the middle for my the the little um, seed things that are in the middle. So once I have that smile line, now what I'm doing is I'm creating these little petals all along the side of it, as well as the top. So that's in essence how I'm gonna create the petals. I just dipped my brush in white, so now I'm making a little bit of a highlight on these petals. You can have them connect. If they, if they connect great to that centerpiece, great. If not, we're just kind of giving the impression that this is a, a pretty lotus flower. Um, once I've got that, then I quickly wash and dry my number 12 brush so I can add the little dots in the middle. So those are gonna be the seeds. I'm gonna use yellow and white, and I'm really gonna just kind of make these little polka dots. You have to use the white with the yellow, otherwise when the yellow dries, it's gonna be just about invisible because it's gonna be see-through and um, you won't be able to, you, it, it'll show the blue through it. But I am keeping some dark blue just so that looks um, like it's nice and shadowed. And now I'm washing and drying my brush again and I'm gonna pick up some black and I'm gonna add little shadows underneath some of these petals. So that's gonna give this some dimension and it'll have it pop out a little bit. You don't have to do it under all of them. You could even put a little bit in the center here. You could even put some black little dots if you wanted to. Um, but that's all I'm gonna do. So I did my petals, uh, I did the dots in the middle, and then I did the shadow below. And for the next step, 
we are going to, let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? We're going to use this medium brush again, but I want you to wash it and dry it. All right, so for the next step, I'm going to be using my number 12 brush. I am going to be creating the first layer of my bracelets, and I'm going to be using just black paint. So I like to take my brush and spin it in my paint on the side of my palette. That will make my brush nice and pointy. And you want these to kind of be um, like an arcing motion, almost like a C. I start at one side. I'm going to curve it come down and you're going to curve it back just so it reaches the underside of the arm. You can do it at different um, directions. So this one is curved a little bit different. Maybe this one's a little bit closer to the skin. Maybe you have one that is wider. So you push your brush harder and that's going to give you a thicker bracelet. So you can have as many as you want. I've seen people put, you know, 15. I've seen people put two. However many you want is totally fine. And I'm going to go and do some on this arm. Oops, that was a little bit aggressive there. So we'll figure out how to work this. Something like that. And again, you could certainly use a little bit, um, a smaller brush. I'll I'll do a little touch up on that later or hide it with some polka dots. Um, maybe this one is a little bit bigger. So really you can have fun with this, put them at different angles. Maybe this one comes over this way. I'm going to put a little bit more paint on my brush for that one. And then we're going to switch brushes after this step. Um, we're going to switch to the smaller brush. So when you get done putting as many bracelets on here as you want, you can put this medium uh, round brush away in your water cup and take out your small, I think it's a number zero round brush for the next step. Alrighty, so here we go. The next step that we're gonna do is the little details on the hands to try and get it to look like there's fingers involved with little fingernails. Um, I'm going to use my zero, number zero round brush. I'm going to use brown and black, but the trick that I'm going to do is I'm going to water down the brown and black a little bit. So put a little bit of brown and black on there. I take a touch of water just so it can be a nice smooth consistency. I'm going to start my, my details by making a line down the center of my hands and you're going to notice I don't do really clean lines when I do this. I don't want to give the impression that I'm trying to make this into a photograph. I know that there might be some wrinkles down the middle of those hands so I just kind of pull this out a little bit. Um, I do say I've got some some spots that are unpainted over here that I'm just hitting, but brown and black. So that's the first thing. Get that line going down the center. Then the easiest fingernails to start are these top ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I want it. And I'm going to say, okay, that's my first one. Here's my second one. So that's the, the, the um, if you're looking at your hand, this is going to be the middle finger. So the next finger is going to be the one next to the pinky, and it's usually a little bit shorter. So I'm going to start that one in through here. And what I'm going to do, I need to bring that finger down kind of in front. So I'm just going to make myself a non-straight line coming down here to separate the other finger. I need a fingertip, so I've given myself a little bit of a fingertip. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I've got a fingernail in through here. I'm going to try and make it similar size to that one. I'm going to bring the front of the finger down in through here. And if you get a clunky line like that, you can always thin it out in a minute, but we'll just get the fingers on here. I need a fingertip right here. Now I need my pinky fingers. 
they're going to be somewhere in here. So I'm going to put a little fingernail in through here. This is going to be my pinky. I'm going to put a fingertip and I need the, the finger part to come down the separation. So I've got a little fingernail in through here. I've got a fingertip and I've got the front of the finger coming down in through here. So I've got a little bit clunky in a couple areas. So what I'm going to do is I just kind of wet my brush. I'm going to go into my original colors, white and brown, and maybe just thin out some of these lines if I have to. So you can put a little bit of white on your brush. You could also, um, if the paint is still wet, you can use a little bit of water. Um, that will help to thin out any lines. But I'm just kind of, I don't really, again, I'm not really going for photorealism here. I just want to give the impression that I've got some fingernails, that these are hands, um, it's as opposed to feet. <laughs> I don't want anybody to think that, you know, I'm trying to do some contortionist movement here. Um, but you can, I've had people put fingernail polish on these nails. So if you, if you like the shape of them, but you're not digging, you know, the color of them, or you're not digging how you got the fingers, don't worry, just put, you know, put red or put purple or, or whatever color you like on, on them as polish. Um, and I, I'm thinking I'm all right with this because I've got the separation. I might lighten up this one just a little bit. Um, and you could bring them out a little bit if you wanted to, or make those lines a little bit less dark by just bringing some of the lighter color up into them. Um, but once we're done with that step, we are going to switch back to the number 12 round brush. So get your fingers on there, put your small brush away, get to the medium round brush out and get ready for the next step. Alrighty, so for the next step, what we're gonna do is we are painting the colors on the bracelets. You can really pick any color you want and it's just polka dots throughout it. I suppose you could do stripes or whatever, but totally up to you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a couple colors here. Um, I will probably use orange, red, yellow, white, and blue, but you could make whatever colors you want. I do recommend if you're gonna use a bright color like this that you also use white, so that way it becomes nice and vibrant. Um, if you use it alone, like a nice bright color on top of black, what's going to happen is the black will probably penetrate through as it's drying, um, and then your color is going to become dull. So I do recommend using it with another color. So that first one was orange and white. This one is red and white. Um, and again, I'm just polka dotting, but you could certainly, if you wanted to do stripes or do a solid color, it's really up to you. I just washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up uh, yellow and white, and I'm going ahead and making my dots. I am using thick paint, um, so that way I don't have to worry about the coverage. It is, it is what it is. It'll make it nice and um, vibrant. Um, I guess this one's white with a little hint of something underneath. And then I think I'm going to do maybe some blue and white. I guess I have some remnants of yellow on my brush too. So again, I'm just having fun. I'm really not washing my brush and, and caring what exact color I've got. Um, so I just picked up red, blue, and white at the same time. So maybe I'm gonna get a little bit of purple in through here. Uh, I guess I'm going for some orange and white for this last one with whatever remnants were on my brush. Um, and then for the next step, we are gonna use this same brush, the number 12 round. So when you get your bracelets all nice and decorated, you can wash and dry that same brush and get ready for the next step. All right. Uh, so for the next step, we're going to be using the number 12 round brush. We're going to be using white paint. And what we're going to be doing is kind of illuminating this center design. 
So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be making a white polka dot circle-ish around my um, leaves or petals. So I've got my number 12 round brush and I'm going to sit here and I am going to make a polka dotted circle. I am really kind of doing this in a fluid fashion, which means I'm not sitting here thinking about going from this point to this point. I think if you um, labor over that portion of it, you, the, your circle ends up being um, almost like an octagon kind of look. Um, and once you get this, step back. And if you feel like, like I feel like this side needs to be bumped out a little bit. So I'm gonna bump that side out a little bit. You know, kind of work this into a shape that you're happy with. And once you do that, you're just gonna keep picking up white paint and you're gonna dot in these sections that have now been created between your petals or your leaves. Again, don't know what you're gonna call them, but um, you might want to, I like kind of going up and down each petal because that allows me to give a nice outline to each one and then fill in the rest. Um, it helps to make sure I've identified and kind of highlighted the shape of each one of those um, leafy or petal kind of structures. And I like to use a lot of paint. Um, when you use a lot of paint on your brush in this type of step, you're gonna get a more solid dot. Um, some people really love that clean, solid um, dot that really looks round. Um, I'm more interested in just kind of marks as opposed to perfect um, circular marks or circular um, objects. So if you are one of those kind of A-type personalities who really wants your, your polka dots to be really circular, you can use, there's all different kinds of tools that you can use to aid you in making that perfect little mark. Um, which could be a Q-tip, it could be the end, the butt end of your brush. Um, there's lots of aids that you could use in order to um, create that really symmetrical, perfectly executed um, polka dot. Um, but I like mine to be more random. I like them to have a little bit more body and um, personal character to them. I like to have the ability to fill in gaps with maybe smaller dots. Um, so you'll find your groove once you um, have it and you've got this entire area filled in as much as you want. Uh, we are gonna use this same brush for the next step, but you're gonna wanna wash it and dry it in between. Um, so when you get this step all done, wash and dry that number 12 round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so this is in essence the last step, of course, except for your little signature at the end, but um, it's the polka dot design that you have all over the canvas. Um, I've done this painting several times and I know how this is such an incredibly creative step um, and an individual step. So I'm gonna guide you into how I've done my design, but I encourage you to express your own feelings into it. Make the colors your colors, make the design your design. Um, use me as inspiration, use my design as inspiration, but have fun with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use light or bright colors to separate each one of these petals. I'm gonna create a bright center surrounding my lotus so my lotus pops out and I'm gonna have a spray of bright colors coming out of each one. This one will come down here. Oops, I had wet paint in my hand. Of each one of these petals. It's gonna be a, almost like it'll start small and it's gonna gain 
um, width as it goes farther away. And then I'm going to color in the rest of it with darker polka dots. Um, so you can watch me do mine. I'm gonna start with yellow and, oops, maybe a little red, yellow, red, and white on my brush. And I'm going to be creating a nice bright separation between all of my leaves slash petals. I do reload my brush often, so that way I make sure I have a good amount of paint on my brush. And I'm not really concerned if I have the same exact color every time I reload my brush, but I know that in this particular um, pattern, I'm gonna be using yellow and white for um, this almost an outline of these um, of these petals, which helps to start the um, identifying factor for them and gets them to um, start to jump off of or jump out of your canvas. Because right now, them being black is really just making them dark and dreary. Um, so I want you to be able to see them and this. Um, bright color is going to help you do that. So I'm using yellow and white to create this outline around these petals. And you saw that I also did an outline around that center circle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize this orange color. That's gonna be orange and white. I don't, I'm a very lazy brush washer, um, so I'm using orange and white next as almost my next um, layer going in towards the center of this um, petal or leaf. And again, this is my um, color preference. You may want to do what, you know, something completely different, but I like these ones, the exterior of these petals to be nice and bright um, so that way you can really see them um, as their own piece of this puzzle. Um, and once I've got this nice bright exterior to it, I am going to put a kind of a darker um, interior part to it with red. So now right now I'm just kind of going right along the edges. I'm going to quickly wash and dry my brush because I want to put some nice kind of solid red in through these centers. I'm using thick paint, um, but I'm using just red. So I know because there's a black base behind it, it will dry much darker than it is when it's wet. So I might come back later and put a second coat on it, but for now, I'm just gonna, I'm using thick paint um, and the thicker it is, the more um, true to the color it will be when it dries. But you'll notice if you choose to do the same um, color pattern as I'm doing, that this red paint will dry much darker as um, when it's dry. And then once I've got that, now I'm gonna go finish that center part. Um, for me, I'm gonna go maybe white with a little bit of my blue and I'm going to, oops, I guess I had some other colors on there. My palette's a little a mess right now. That's okay, that's the fun of painting. So this is white and blue for me. I don't wanna interfere with my beautiful lotus that I've created. So even if you've gotta kinda of just go around in a circular fashion and then just kind of add some extra polka dots around it, don't interfere with that beautiful, um, lotus flower that you've created. All right, and now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush again. You'll, you, you'll find throughout this process, you may wanna wash and dry your brush quite frequently too. Um, it's all how you want these dots to, to be um, individualized. If you like the colors blending together, then maybe you won't wash your brush um, too frequently. I, like I always state, I'm kind of a lazy brush washer, so I don't wash it as much as I should. Um, as I come through to do these, what I call sprays of color out these, um, out these leaves, I'm gonna try and do it in a similar um, color pattern 
as I did for these petals. So it almost looks like the petals are spraying out these colors. So I'm gonna go um, yellow and, whoop, and white and I'm gonna make my, my dots in essence coming out. I know that I want them wider as they go further out. So I'm kind of just making um, almost like a trail of them and the trail gets wider as it goes further away. I know these are gonna come down in through here. I've already got some light spots that I accidentally made a minute ago. Um, this one's gonna come out here. And again, I'm gonna make them kind of thicker as they get farther away. I think I want a couple more down here. Um, yellow and white, I've got, oh, I'm really loading up my brush here. And make it a little bit wider as it goes farther away. Yellow and white. And you can see I've got these kind of wiggling as they go. They don't have to be straight lines coming out. Now I'm, I'm not even washing my brush. I'm going into that orange color. And I'm gonna do the same thing, only now I'm gonna do a little bit further out. And because I did that one on the right, I'll do this one on the right side of this one. And again, I'll make it go wider as it goes further away. And that way it's gonna make it look like it's really, you know, expanding or um, having a larger footprint the farther away it goes. Same thing with here. I had some extra yellow and white on that one, so that one's extra bright. No worries. Um, I'm keeping consistent, gonna go on the left of this one. And you know, if you can keep it in a similar pattern, great. I really feel like I wanna switch the sides of this orange on this side, but I'm gonna stick to it. Go with what I chose to do in the beginning and I'm sure it'll all play out. Um, now, I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just wiping out my paper towel. I wanna go into some of that red right now. Um, but I want this to kind of be pretty visible, so I might um, might use a little orange with it, but right now I'm still sticking with the just the red. And then once you've got this spray of colors um, coming out of these petals or leaves, then you just go right ahead and you're gonna dot the whole rest of the canvas with whatever colors you want. So, ooh, I missed that top one. Hold on, hold the phone. Can't miss this one. It's an important one. Yellow, orange, and red. And now I'm gonna go, um, for me, I'm gonna do the majority of the rest of the um, canvas with blue and white. Um, but you might, you might want purple, which you can mix with blue and red. You might want um, a lighter orange or a darker orange or, you know, have fun with these colors. I've got, my brush is dirty right now. So I've got this lighter blue with some remnants of yellow on there. So I'm having some green kind of polka dot thing happening, um, but I'm digging it. So I'm just kind of going for it. Um, I am gonna try and make, as I go down towards the bottom of the canvas, I'm gonna have that get maybe a little bit darker as I go down there. But right now I'm starting, I've got these kind of lighter blue dots. And this is, you could have this overlap into your other sections. You really, you know, this is yours. You, you make it whatever way you want. You just keep dotting the hell out of this and having fun with it and making it as individualized as you want. You can probably detect my polka dots at this point are not perfect. I am just kind of mushing the tip of that brush. You can, um, you could even do black if you wanted as you get down towards this bottom section. It's really a personal preference. Let me get my brush out of the way there. Um, I think I am going to go, I'm getting into this darker section here. I'm gonna go, what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna pick up some red and some of my original blue and let's see what's gonna happen here. So I'm gonna get these cool dark, tones down at the bottom. They're almost like it's going into the deep depths of the 
the uh, the un shadows under the hands or whatever the case may be. I'm kind of just making that kind of stuff up as I go, but I'm just going with the colors that are making me happy. I wanna, you know, I've got red and blue on my brush at the same time, just added a little bit of white just to get this intermingling of colors. I've got this cool pattern that's happening with my brush right now. It's not even the, the regular polka dots. It's this almost like this um, little fluffy design. Um, but I'm digging it. I think it's really cool, so I'm going with it. If I wanted the real po clear polka dots, I would definitely use more paint on my brush um, and dot it, you know, more distinctly. But I'm digging this. Um, so I think I think I might call it. I I've got all the colors I want. I've got the nice spray coming out of the center. Um, but with all good paintings or with any paintings for that matter, at least, it, especially if you had fun doing them, there is one final step that we need to do, and it's gonna be with your um, smallest round brush. So when you get this design all delicately placed on your canvas, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out that small brush and get ready for that final, final, final step. All right, so the final step to any painting is to sign it. So I'm gonna sign mine with my small brush with black paint in the bottom left or the bottom right. Totally up to you. Um, I usually do my initials, but you could do your first name, you could do the date, you could do really whatever you want to. Um, and that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting. And I totally look forward to painting with you again sometime.